Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Whiskey Reviews. Today we're going to do uh, review number eight, blind review number eight of um, a sample again, picked from my collection by, by my wife. I have no idea uh, what it is. Although this one's looking like a bit of a darker colour. I'd call that dark gold, probably. It's not quite not quite amber, but uh, dark gold. I might just have a look at the bubbles as well, because I've forgotten to do that last two reviews, and it helped me quite a lot with the uh, with the lager volume. Um, again, this just gives you a bit of an idea of the viscosity of the the whiskey, just how long those bubbles last for and how thick they are. Um, hmm, doesn't look like that one's quite lasted quite as long as the Lagavulin did, which is quite a high viscosity. Um, but we can have a bit of a look in the glass as well. Let's have a bit of a look here. So with the viscosity in the glass, it's not looking like it's quite as high as some of the other samples I've had that have been up at 60% but it is still looking like a reasonably high viscosity. The legs are quite slow moving, um, although they're a bit thicker. Hmm, very interesting. Reminded me um, of something sherried, really. So um, rather than being from a bourbon barrel, having been matured in a, a sherry cask, But it's not really thick, it's not really heavy. You can have some really heavily sherried whiskies that are very, very intense and very thick and syrupy. And this is um, reasonably light, but you're definitely getting that raisin. I get a lot of raisin, normally Oloroso sherry casks when they've matured whiskey. Um, bit of kind of dried fruit and lovely sort of cinnamon note. I absolutely love cinnamon, it's like my favorite, uh, probably my favorite spice. And you've got a little bit of that here. Some kind of cake, something, something, some kind of cake with cinnamon in, and raisins, a bit of dried fruit. But it's all quite light. It's not um, super intense. The first thing this is reminding me of is a Glenfarclas 15, but I found that that was maybe a little bit more floral and malty, and this is just a touch lighter. Macallan Ruby, that kind of thing as well, maybe. Just from the nose alone, anyway. Let's have a taste. Very soft at first, very smooth. Lacking a tiny bit of power and then coming through a bit more, this kind of maltiness. These kind of sherry notes of the, the raisin, a bit of dried fruit, and then a bit of spiciness sort of builds up as well. Get a touch of um, of ginger, gingerbread. Oh, there are so many, so there are so many, literally so many things this could be because the sherry's sherry casks especially tend to kind of cover up the character of the whiskies maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it's a little bit it's a difficult one. I often find as well as sherry casks sometimes. Um, Maybe if the casks aren't quite as good as they could be, um, or if it's a finishing for not a huge period of time, they can be a little bit rubbery. Um, and you're getting a little bit of that in the nose here. A bit of maltiness and chocolate coming out on the nose now. The sherry casks tend to bring a little bit more bitterness to the whiskey sometimes as well. From tasting this, I don't think it's at a massive strength. Um, probably 43 or 46%. Yeah, it is a little bit spicy into the finish. And you're getting a little touch of oak. Not a lot of oak, but um, just, a, just a tad. And there's a little bit of heather actually coming out on the nose now. Which, um, and maybe a touch of orange, which, uh, that kind of heather and orange reminds me a little bit of Highland Park. Marmalade, orange marmalade, yeah. It's a bit more oaky now, a bit more of that kind of oaky spice coming through into the finish. Um, those kind of heathery notes are building on the nose. There's a very, very light touch of, um, of sea salt. And this is really taking me towards Highland Park now. 
um, which it very well could be. The question is what age? Um, but with the spiciness, the spicy oak, um, and the strength being reasonably low, I might have to go with the 18. But I'm not sure it's complex enough. I remember Highland Park 18 being very complex, really, really nice whiskey. And this one uh, isn't quite as much. This one's a little bit spicy development wise and um, a little bit lacking on the taste and, and finish. But then there is that sherry there. I am left in a bit, of, a bit of a muddle with this one where I'm not really too sure what it is. There's nothing kind of leaping out at me. And I might have to go with Highland Park 12. Should I do that? It's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. I would have thought Highland Park 12, that I've tasted quite a lot. I would really jump out and go, you know, I'm Highland Park 12. But it's the only whiskey I think that has that um, kind of heathery marmalade. But then I wasn't getting any smoke and Highland Park generally is a bit lightly peated. You know what, I'm going to go with Glenrothes instead actually. I'm going to go another way with it. I'm going to go another way with it because uh, because there's not really any smoke there. I, I definitely would have picked up on a bit of smoke I think if it had been Highland Park 12. Not that I've had a huge great track record with detecting smoke just yet but um, Glenrothes has a similar kind of style, I think, that kind of slightly honeyed, um, heathery, malty taste. It's often matured in sherry casks as well. And I do remember there's a Glenrothes I have that's a bit more, um, has a bit of a spicy kick to it. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. Um, Glenrothes, 1997 from Signatory's Unchill Filter Collection, which is from a sherry cask. Uh, or a couple of sherry casks, uh, casks. I don't think they're single casks normally, at 46% alcohol. Now, if I can just get the sellotape off, we can go to the reveal and see what this whiskey is. Let's have a look. So Glenrothes 1997 Signatory Unchill Filter Collection, 46%. No, it isn't at all. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it, it is instead a Milton Duff, uh, which... Kind of makes sense why I uh, had no idea what it was, because who the hell's heard of Milton Duff? Because who the hell's heard of Milton Duff? Um, but I think it's a distillery in Speyside. Milton Duff, seven years old, 2005, uh, from Douglas Lang's Provenance series. I, I did think it was kind of young. Why did I go with Glenrothes? It's so much older. That's like it's like 19 years old. But there was a bit of oak there. 46%. So I was right with the 46%, at least. At least I was right with the strength of this one, if not the age, distillery, or region. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good. It's good to get things wrong sometimes, because that's how you learn. But I definitely imagine this from a sherry cask, seven years old from a sherry cask. But anyway, thank you very much for, for tuning in and, and watching, and... Um, Hopefully we'll have a couple more videos coming up soon. So yeah, thank you.